Hi everyone and welcome to my latest video in my creative kinetic typography series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this video all within After Effects. If you like it I'd love for you to hit the like button, pop a comment below and if you're not already hit the subscribe button. So let's jump straight in and I'm going to show you how to recreate it. I'm going to start off by creating our basic type animation so I'm going to press command T to get up our type tool and I'm going to drag a box the size of the screen and I'm going to type creative. Now for this tutorial I'm using Druck Wide Super but you can use whatever font you like. I'd recommend using one that is quite a wide font. There's loads out there for you to choose. I'm using this vibrant pink colour and I've got a black outline of three pixels. Let's make this size about 120 and click off. Now if I press this button here this is going to show the transparency grid behind so you can see that thick outline around the text. Now let's move the anchor point, uh, press U and drag that over to the side. If you hold down command that will click onto the left hand side. So we're going to start by animating the scale on this one. So if I press option S that brings up my scale keyframe and it's already added one in there because I held down alt and I'm going to press this link button here that's going to allow me to animate the horizontal and vertical parameters separately let's start by dragging the first parameter all the way out till the type hits the other side of the composition and then let's go to one second and let's make this 50 percent and then go to two seconds and copy that first keyframe and paste it at two seconds and at this point we want to add a position and anchor keyframe one frame before this one so to make sure that it's accurate we hold down command and we press the left arrow and that will move one keyframe in the timeline so let's add an anchor point keyframe so let's hold down alt and press a and hold down or and press P and that will give me a position and an anchor keyframe. Let's go one frame to the right so that we're in line with the keyframe for the scale parameter. So hold down command and press the right arrow and then we're going to and then we're going to press the Y button. That's going to bring up our anchor point tool. So again, let's hold down command and let's drag this all the way to the right until it snaps on the far right side of the type layer. Now that's gonna automatically add a keyframe for position for us as well. And all we're doing is changing the position of the anchor point. So if I go back one frame, there's gonna be no difference between those two frames. Now if we go to three seconds and animate the scale parameter down to 50%, that's gonna simply move it over to the right hand side. So if we've got that animation, it's gone from big to small on the left goes big again and then goes small to the left and so then we just go to four seconds and copy the keyframe from the beginning and it goes back to big and we will loop that round so if I press the end button that brings my timeline in to just this section so if I was to loop it it would loop round like that cool so let's make this layer the size of our timeline so let's hold down alt and press the closing bracket and that will shrink the layer that we're on down to where our playhead is in the timeline. Now let's animate these keyframes and make it a slightly more interesting. So highlight one of the scale keyframes and press the graph editor. Make sure that you're on the speed graph, so right click in the timeline and make sure you've got edit speed graph ticked. And let's highlight the last keyframe and this keyframe here and let's drag that down so that they go out as far as each other so that we're matching the keyframe velocity. And do the same for these ones, so drag it out and then do the same for the bottom ones as well. So what we're doing is we're telling the animation to ease in and speed up at this point and then ease out and then do that on each one of the keyframes. So let's hit play to see what that looks like. And we've got a much nicer, much smoother animation there. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate this layer. So press Command D and press U to bring up all our keyframes. And then we want to reverse this animation. So we fill the space with typography that is currently empty. So let's start off by swapping these two keyframes around. So I'm going to press the plus button to zoom in and you just drag it across to the right hand side, highlight both of them and move them across. So all you've done is swap those two keyframes around. If I zoom out again and then now we want to run through the timeline and essentially by eye just drag this out until it's almost touching that type. 
and then we go back to the beginning and we make that naught and we make the middle one naught and then we go to three seconds and we copy this keyframe and we paste it here and we go to the end and we press naught again. So if we were to play that through, you can see what it looks like. So there we have it. We have type pushing the other type out of the way and it loops round. So now we have the basic animation. Let's pre-compose this. So let's highlight both layers, press Command Shift C. That will bring up our pre-compose window. And let's type in type any 01. Now we have this basic animation. We want to enable time remapping. So let's right click on the layer, go to time, enable time remapping. And essentially that shows our animation between these two keyframes. And then at this point, it just drops off and goes because there's nothing beyond that point. So what we want to do is we want to change this keyframe to one frame before. So if it's four seconds, then you want to do it at three seconds and 24 frames. This was four seconds and one frame. So let's make it four seconds. So this will stop it from being blank after that keyframe. Now we want to, we also want to add an expression here so that it loops out. So you hold down all and press the stopwatch and we type our loop expression in, which is loop. And then it all, it's already written it up for me. So loop out with two brackets and inside you want to add quote marks and we want it to cycle. There we go. So if we were to play after this, it will just loop on itself. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because when we duplicate each layer, we're going to offset it slightly and then we want it to loop round automatically. So uh, if we weren't to do this, you'll just see loads of blank spaces underneath that then animate in which we don't want. We want it to loop around. So if I was to duplicate this layer and we push it down one and we push it out one like that. So instead of having this blank space, and it's starting here, we would just move the timeline across like that so that it would loop out. There we go. So we want to do that for loads of layers and fill up the entire screen. So I'll do that now. Okay, so once you have that done, you may have seen that as I was going, I was moving each layer across one. So after each frame, a new layer comes in like that. There we go. And you'll see that we've got our basic animation. So to make sure that it doesn't animate in the way it currently is, we want to just move these along in the timeline until this bottom one is aligned with the front like that. So if I press play again, you'll see it perfectly loops round to the beginning. So now we have this, we can start to adapt it slightly and add a bit more interest to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change every other layer to a different color. So let's go through and highlight every other layer. And I'm gonna add tritone. I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna add it to my layer. And then I'm gonna change the midtone to a different color. Let's make it more of a purple something like that and hit OK. And then I'm going to highlight all of these layers and press Command A and I'm going to add a drop shadow to this. Now, by adding a drop shadow, I'm actually going to make this feel a little bit more 3D. So it's just got the bottom layer highlighted at the moment. So I'm going to just change the drop shadow on this one and I can duplicate it across the other layers. So I'm going to type in 80% uh, here for the direction of the shadow. And then I'm going to make the distance 10 and I'm going to make the softness about D, maybe not so much, maybe 20. I'm going to copy that and just see what that looks like on all the layers. I'm going to press Command A when I'm in my timeline and I'm going to press Command V to paste that on each one. And yeah, I think that looks perfect. Just adds a little bit of depth to each of the layers. Now, one thing I've realized I haven't done is make sure that each of these layers are aligned perfectly lengthways. So I'm gonna go to the top. I'm actually gonna move that top one up just slightly so it's closer to the top. And then pressing Command A, I'm gonna go to my Align window. Now, if you can't see this, just go up to Window and make sure you've got Align ticked here. And I'm gonna press Distribute Layers Vertically. So press that and it will, and it will do exactly what it says on the tin by distributing the layers vertically and equally. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a background color. So I'm going to right click in my window here, press new solid, and I'm going to go for this kind of light pinky color. 
I'm gonna press OK. And then to put that at the bottom of your layers, I'm gonna press Command, Shift, and then open brackets to put that at the bottom of my composition. And that's it, it really is that easy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, pop a comment below, and hit the subscribe button. All your engagement with my videos really helps. Thanks, and until next time, take care.